a big hello to all the aspirants out there welcome back to my youtube channel let's crack it guys and this is my first face cam video thank you for all your support those who have subscribed and those who are watching my videos and i'm back with a new video about uh, solving three coding questions which were asked previously in february slot accenture question and also i'll be explaining both the coding part and also the logic part i mean logic at the same time the live coding in front of you so finally for those who are poor at coding i'll be giving uh, explaining the metric how to clear the public test cases even if you don't know the logic like for people who are from non-IT branches if you are not well in coding still you can execute those public cases at the end of the video I'll be explaining that so without much delay let's dive into our video guys and here comes the very first question so this question is titled as trailing zeros trailing zero score so here is the question you are given in one integer n write a function that returns the number of trailing zeros in n factorial so first of all you need to understand the term trailing zeros for example there is a number 1870 so the trailing zero is the uh, number of zeros occurring at the end of the digit so one trailing zero for example another number 182600 so the number of trailing zeros are two so now the question here is that we will be having a number n so we need to return the number of trailing zeros in n factorial so here 5 5 factorial is equals to 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 1 so 120 is 5 factorial value here the trailing zero is 1 so the one will be our final answer we need to return 1 explanation factorial of 5 is 120 number of trailing zeros is 1 i think it's clear enough so moving on here comes the second test case n is equal to 4 the result should be 0 because 4 factorial contains no zeros and 10 10 factorial contains two zeros hence the output is 2 so now let's check for 100 factorial basically 100 factorial contains 24 zeros so now let's check the logic here how to find the number of trailing zeros in a given factorial the logic is when 100 is divided by 5 it is 20 and then 20 divided by 5 it is 4 and then again 4 is divided by 5 it is 0 so we need to calculate this until the n value becomes 0 so this is the trick guys so for 100 factorial the output will become 24 similarly for example 10 factorial now I am dividing 10 by 5 exactly I get 2 and the remainder will be 0 0 by 5 will be 0 for example if I want to find out the factorial 15 factorial trailing zeros 15 by 5 3 directly so there are only three zeros like uh, I have to find out the 24 factorial 24 when divided by 5 4 will be the quotient and remainder will be 4 again the remainder divided by 5 we get 0 4 trailing zeros that's what the logic now here comes the very first question I am coding it in Python 3 trailing zeros so guys there will be only one input that is n and now i have to define a function call i'm naming it as trail and only one argument so i have to define this function finally i have to print the value written by this function from the function trail of n so this is the entire code guys just i need to implement the logic now let us store the result as count initially the count will be zero and now I am running a while loop such that the condition will be n must be greater than or equal to 5 only then there will be a power of 5 right so n greater than or equal to 5 and then n is equals to n by 5 so the meaning of this will be the quotient the integral quotient so then count is equals to count plus n so that's it the logic of the function guys now i have to return the final value final result return the result is stored in the count variable so i am returning the count so now let's check it against the sample test cases if the if we give 10 input there will be the output will be 2 because the 10 factorial contains only two zeros so 4 factorial contains 0 0 zeros no zeros at all and 100 factorial contains 24 zeros yes perfect so guys that's it the function I hope you guys have understood the logic so moving on to the next question here comes the second one double factorial code this was asked on Feb 12th so there are two integers m comma n and we need to write a function such that m comma n are the arguments of the function it's clear so but what will be the result 
so the result will be understood after reading the explanation part the factorial of 7 is 5040 factorial of 2 will be 2 and the result should be 2520 so by see, seeing this we will be getting one logic right 5040 and factorial of 2 is 2 the final answer was 2520 so by seeing this we can simply say that we are returning m factorial divided by n factorial so let's look at some more test cases so that we can have some confirmation so guys here comes the test, second test case where the input value m is equals to 5 and n is equals to 3 so m factorial value will be 120 and n factorial value will be 6 so m factorial divided by n factorial value will be 20 so the output is 20 so by this you guys are clear enough with the logic of the code so all we need to do is simply code it in any one programming language now let's code double factorial code using python so here comes the code so first of all i have to worry about the two inputs so m will be the first input m is equals to int of input and then n there are two different integer inputs so m comma n so it's done until here then after i have to print the value written by the function so i am naming naming the function as fun i am giving the two arguments as m comma n here it's showing error because uh, still the function is not yet defined so now let's define the function with arguments m comma n so i am initializing two different variables here a comma b so a is equals to b equals to 1 these two integers i am defining because i want to store the factorial of a in 1 and the factorial of n in b factorial of m in a so for i in range of 1 comma m plus 1 i in range of the loop runs until m a is equals to a star i now we get the factorial of m in the variable a and repeating the same for the n also so finally the output should be returning m factorial divided by n factorial which will be a by b simply i am running the code guys giving the sample case inputs 7 comma 2 but here we were given integer input but here we got the decimal input output so now it gets perfect i think yes perfect and testing it with different test cases 5 3 20 so guys all the test cases are passed this is the final code i will be pasting it in the description box also and moving on to the next question guys here comes the third one number of selective arrangements this was asked this was asked on february 10th so given a number of objects n so find the number of ways where no object occurs in original position so we need to simply write a function which accepts integer n and returns the result so if n is equals to 3 the result will be 2 so for all those who did not understand the question see here n represent the number of objects for example here 3 number of objects be 3 1 2 3 let's name the objects as a b c and this is the position 1 position 2 position 3 so we need to uh, return the number or the output such that which represents the number of ways in which these three objects can be represented but not belonging to the same position such a should not belong to position 1 again and b should not be 2 and c should not be 3 anymore like b c a will be one possibility and here comes the b and here comes a and here comes c a b these are the only two possibilities so option two will be the correct sorry the two will be the right result you will get some more clarity on watching the second test case so here comes the second sample test case where the input is 5 and the output is 44 so here like a b c d e five different objects 1 2 3 4 5 other positions now a should not occur in first position b c d e should not occur in 2 3 4 5 respective positions anymore like a can occur here b c d e this is one possibility a b c d e this is another possibility so on there are lots of possibilities which we cannot calculate manually so that is the reason there is a mathematically formula n factorial the arrangements of n is equal to n factorial into 1 minus 1 by 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 factorial minus 1 by 
3 factorial and so on until n so but on substituting the values for d or d arrangements of 1 d arrangements of 2 3 4 we get values like d arrangements of 1 is 0 because on substituting the i mean in the formula we get it and 2 we get one value for 3 2 and d of 4 is equals to 9 d of 5 is equals to 44 and so on so by observing this series we can also frame a different formula like d arrangements of n is equals to n minus 1 into d arrangements of n minus 1 plus d arrangements of n minus 2 so this is the exact written statement which is enough to execute this code like using functions recursive function using recursive function we can execute this code and let let me show it to you so moving on let's modify the same code for rearrangements guys here there is on, there will be only one input so i am cutting it so n is equals to int of input so i am naming the function as arrangements so arrangements and there will be only one argument so it's fine until here right so the n will be the input and i am printing the return value which from the arrangements function so let's define the function we already know that number of rearrangements for value 1 number of objects if n is equals to 1 i have to return 0 so if n equals to 1 return 0 i also know that if n is equals to 2 i will be returning 1 that's it so these are the two base cases guys and now i will be using the recursive function like final return statement will be written n else in else case i have to return return n minus 1 star n minus 1 star number of arrangements of n minus 1 plus n minus 2 number of arrangements of n minus 1 number of arrangements of n minus 2 so this will be the perfect code guys so i hope i am clear enough guys there is a small mistake i have to replace these square brackets let's execute the code now i am giving the input as 5 44 the right answer we got it if i give 3 it's 2 now for 4 it should be 9 perfect so guys that's it this is the code and i will be pasting it in the description box okay guys as i have promised you guys that i'll be explaining how to clear the public test cases even if you don't know the logic so now let's take this previous example already i have no, no executed perfect i mean with all the test cases passing because i know the logic so now let's uh, let me remove the logic entire logic part so this is an empty code guys this is an empty function so now you need to ex i mean clear the public test cases how come you, you are gonna do that like but you are you know the public test cases that if the input is 4 the output should be uh, 9 like uh, suppose that there are three sample cases given in the question itself those are called the public cases now what i need to do is simply i have to uh, use if condition like if n is equals to 4 return 9 so by this statement one one case will be satisfied like likewise similarly if n is equals to 2 and return 1 and the third case if n is equals to of high i have to return 44 that's it so this is the most basic level of coding guys like even for this code definitely these three test cases are going to be passed so this is the way simply you are you have to use if case if condition the output if condition the output and finally you can also use else condition you may return some random value that's it so this is how you need to take care i mean if you don't know the logic